And welcome back to our Let's Play of Hegemony, Ancient Wars of Greece. And uh, since we last uh, talked, uh, people are asking where the Civ 5 Let's Play is. I'll, we'll play Civ 5 tomorrow, but I'm, I'm, in, I'm in the zone with this game right now. So, uh, moving forward. But yeah. Uh, so anyway, since we last talked, uh, I took these two cities completely... Annihilating these guys whose names I can't remember and history ro won't remember their names either So that sucks for them as we slowly expand our influence and now we're looking at Elise or Ellis or don't know how to pronounce it but We have our army forming up on the plains here ready to start marching into this area of the, area of the Peloponnese and we're taking two hoplites, two Cretan archers, and two ballista, which I hope will be enough. Um, the Argoloid Federation has been launching attacks on us, so I've stationed a uh, Cretan archer regiment and some Spartan hoplites in this valley, which has been able to blunt their attacks pretty substantially. So I'm not too worried about that, and winter is coming, so we won't need to worry about any kind of overseas invasions. Uh, the one thing we, we, we might need to worry about is food in the coming uh, the coming future because uh, in winter your farms produce less so you have to hope that your cities have enough stockpiled that it'll be okay so let's hope but I am bringing some sheep with us so hopefully the sheep will be able to help us for, for uh, food and whatnot Unfortunately, this place is losing out on its food supplies. I have to use some of my sheep to feed this city. don't have very many cities. I think this will be a pretty easy conquest. I'm not worried about this one. Right, once those sheep get in there. I'm pressing the wrong buttons. Anyway. The sheep will return to the army. So we're able to catch a bunch of military units garrisoned here, and uh, they're going to be mopped up rather efficiently. Man. Long weekend coming up. Pretty stoked. BC Day, which is, I guess, the equivalence of... Canada Day, or Independence Day for the province of BC. Very exciting. And I think, yeah, I've already told you guys I'll be spending some of that in America going to see Blue Jays game. Also very exciting. Oh crap, on a stick. I forgot. I need to get uh, dudes in these mines. Unfortunately, it looks like some uh, slaves have been transfer transferred over to us. So that's good. Means we need less workers. And that, in turn, saves us money. My poor sheeps are slowly running out of food. But, looks like their farms are pretty much undefended, and they have a lot of them. So we'll be able to move in and gobble up a ton of those farms. Oh, oh, shit. 
Looks like an attack is coming. Or will they be attacking um, whoever these guys? The Achaean League. Or are they going to be attacking Sparta? Which seems silly. Because the Achaean League is probably in a much crappier shape than we are. Nope, they're going to be attacking us. No, oh, no! Oh, crap, we lost our archers, and they're not going to be able to help us. Well, let's hope the Spartan hoplites can show their metal. I'll bring some reinforcements from Sparta itself, but it's doubtful they will make it in time. Send out the militia! I like the animations of the sheep. They just look like they're jumping. Wow, are they like leaving us alone? They're not even bothering to capture the city. Well, that's kind of silly. Maybe they knew they couldn't hold it or something. Look my Spartan hoplites bearing in on them. So, I forgot to mention this, but units gain levels over time. Various things, such as movement and speed and morale and heroics. Lights forward. Okay, good. They'll defend the archers. We'll bring another hoplite unit for defense. This city might run out of food. Oh wait, no, never mind. They'll be fine. So I don't know what these clowns are doing, but whatever it is, it's not, it's not going to be very effective. And we are marching straight to their capital. The 
they're sallying forth everything they got to try and take care of us, but it's not going to be enough. As this Elysian army just gets completely massacred. So I haven't told you guys um, something, and that is uh, in my spare time, which I don't have much of these days, but when I do get it, I've been watching a lot of the show King of the Hill, and I think King of the Hill is probably the second greatest animated series ever made, the only one better being uh, South Park, in my opinion. You can't really argue that like South Park is probably the funniest and most clever animated series ever created but King of the Hill for me is, is up there and then it's like uh, when I was a kid uh, I I guess I didn't, never got it I didn't appreciate it as much because it came out in like 97 or whatever and you know I was pretty young at that time I just didn't like I, I I still liked the show but you know it never really was better for me than like the Simpsons or something I always thought you know like the Simpsons was infinitely better <laughs> no I didn't start appreciating it until I started rewatching it uh, relatively recently and now as an adult a lot of the humor and jokes that they make in the show make so much more sense <laughs> I realized just like how funny it really is, and how subtle uh, the show can be sometimes. Like uh, one of my favorite episodes, uh, as far as um, one where it takes place during the Bush Gore election in 2000, and uh, Hank is obviously uh, he's, well, Hank's Texan. So, if, well, if you don't know the premise of the show, it kind of takes place um, in Texas, and it's kind of the story of a conservative family, uh, you know, blue-collar Republican type of family with uh, you know the lead character Hank and his and his family, and that's just kind of like the formula of of just seeing how this kind of <laughs> This blue-collar sort of Republican interacts with the world, and it's a really compelling formula. And it, you know, it propelled the series for fuck. What was it? Thirteen seasons or something like that. So whatever, whatever they were doing. It's oh Jesus Christ. Oh, that just means it's out of food. Oh, pish posh, will be fine. They'll find food somewhere. I think as time goes on. And the further, I, I don't know if this is true or not, and maybe I just noticed it now, but it seems like the further away from home we get, the more it takes to suppress rebellions, which makes a lot of sense. Just kind of hoping. move this hoplite division to Argos. Is that Argos? Or no, sorry. Knossos. And hopes that this will alleviate the food pressure on the city. And uh, it'll be able to get some food in. In fact, here's what I can do too. You can have... Uh, Another 
you know, with food, come in and chill out in the city. That was probably the unit that died. In any case, as I was talking about, uh, one of my favorite episodes takes place during the 2000 Bush Gore election, or however you want to say. Okay, well, that put out one fire and created another. And, you know, Hank is, uh, he's, he's really rooting for, for George Bush being a Texan and everything. And, uh, he hasn't, he hasn't met him yet, but he's, he's planning to go to, like, a campaign rally for, uh, for George Bush. And his Muse the Land, uh, ends up going to sort of this, like, candidates forum where they learn about all the different parties and everything and what they stand for. And she ends up liking the Communist Party. Because she happens to like the way that the leader of the Communist Party looks, and she thinks he's handsome, and she he's got a good tie and everything, and uh, so all of a sudden she's like a supporter for the Communist Party, and of course nothing could be more horrifying to Hank, and he spends the entire time sort of like lecturing Luann about how you have to vote based on the issues and how you can never ever. Uh, you know, just kind of vote on superficial things, like the way he looks, or what have you. So he ends up taking Luann to see a Bush uh, campaign rally. And ends up meeting uh, Governor Bush and shaking his hand. And George Bush has like a limp handshake. And this terrified, this like, sends Hank into this abysmal state where he's questioning everything he's questioning whether or not you know i can actually vote for this guy whether or not this is uh, this is uh, you know what am i going to do because he thinks that if he votes for president with a weak handshake you know like dictate like third world dictator is going to walk all over him but uh the thing to me that is so genius about that episode is that everybody seems to think that it's like play, like it's a commentary on how important it is to vote. That's not what it is at all. It's uh, sort of an ironic statement about how hypocritical some people can be and how like silly some people can be because like what could be less substantial than how a guy you know, has his handshake just because he has a weak handshake doesn't mean he doesn't have good monetary policy or foreign policy or you know healthcare policy or anything else but Hank after lecturing Luann about how terrible it is to uh, be voting on super superficial issues ends up being completely and totally distraught about one of the most superficial issues you can think about and uh, I, I just I just love that episode for it's like irony and I also like the fact that like not a lot of people seem to get it wow they're hammering me hard fuck Wow, shit. Wow, there, never mind, there's two different, uh, alliances attacking me right now. That's fucked up, man. Well, at least one backed off.
Okay, well, they're moving in and setting fire to just about everything I own. Which is certainly not good for this area. In that and a hoplite division. But uh, these guys are down to their last city, so that's some um, good news. I don't know what happened to my other archer division. Where they have gone. But that's not good. That's really, really not good. Did I end up? Wow, it looks like I lost an archer division and I didn't even know it. If we lost an archery division, we'll be able to take this city no problem. Okay, we're gonna have to extinguish some of these fires. Because things are not looking good. And some of these farms are extremely devastated. Which is really not a position you want to be in. But I think we'll hold on to these cities. These hoplites have enough food on them. To share it with the city. And it will be okay. That was quite a devastating attack. Two-pronged attack came in. I'm just lucky they weren't able to take any cities. Yeah, that farm is functioning at a much reduced capacity. Oh, crap. Nope, nope. We were able to save them. Or not. No, they're giving up. Well, that's just great. We'll still win the battle up here, though. have two more archery units ready to be shipped out but I'm, I'm actually we might not have to paddle up here I was thinking this would be a cakewalk oh fuck wow they held off the Spartan advance in their last city I mean they can't sail up here? Is the water too rough or something? Those 
lucky bastards. Might just hold on for another season. At least we've replaced our losses. And, uh. Jesus Christ, man. Crete is running low on food. It's going to take quite some time before a lot of these units get into position. Oh, fuck. Fortunately, it's only two. to think about how I'm going to plan my strategies. Actually. Good. Well, Dad has decided that mowing the lawn would be a oh, fuck. a fantastic idea right now. Not so much fun for me. aren't you? Stop! Stop them from digging the mines! No! They're gonna take the mines. Increase the stockpiles on this if I can. Mainly because Well, now they're all retreating back, so let's piss off. <laughs> 